Hey guys, so I wanted to talk to you about the wiring situation. I don't know if you can see from this angle, but we have our living room lights in and right now they're plugged into the Jackery uh, with a cigarette outlet cigarette adapter. And right now I am about to just install the other wiring. Not much of it is going to be behind the wall, even though in reality you don't need to worry about that. If you have one long piece of wire and it's not rubbing up against anything, nothing should happen. It should be at the point of contact, so the appliance and the battery and the, the power source. So, but with the bathroom situation, I'll show you. Let's see, give a little wide view. Okay. If you can see, this is the bathroom area. And so we have our wire. If you can see the duct tape. This is where all of the living room lights merge, or most of the wiring merges. So at this point, the living room lights come off this way, and they end right here. And then we have the fan wires that are running right here. Now we have the single bathroom light that runs here, here, and then right here. So right here, we're probably going to install the light switch. I think that'll be it there. So then these wires, I need to put into a conduit and they're all gonna run up here, 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 and then they're gonna run down. So this is their closet space. And then they're gonna come out of behind the wall. Right here is where our Dometic fridge is gonna go. So it's gonna run behind where the Dometic fr fridge is going. And then if you can see, this area is where our uh, solar and electrical components will be. So that's kind of a rundown. So that's that side. And then from the electrical, we'll have some wires running underneath the benches. This is where our kitchen area is gonna go. So we'll have our water pump about here. Honestly, that's it for this side. We're really not putting a lot in here. Um, keeping it simple, our stove is kind of a plug and play stove and we're not really using AC appliances. We just don't have the power for that and it's expensive in the room and this is everything that we're doing is cost effective hey guys it is whew, it is hot out today but i am going to take you through our electrical system and the components that we chose uh, i have the back panel with all of the main components the fuses the wiring and i'm going to go over that with you but i just wanted to do a little disclaimer that this is not a how-to or an instructional video. This is a overview of how we decided to do our system and what made sense to us uh, at the time. So please do your own research and take it as a guideline if anything. I'm not a professional, I'm just a DIYer who did a lot of research. Um, so I highly recommend doing that before getting into yours. So let me show you the system. Okay, so we will start from the solar panel side. Our wires will be traveling right above here and get inserted right here, the positive. And then our negative will squeeze into this right here on the negative. So this is the solar panel side. This is the common negative. This is the alternator. So I have four gauge running to an 80 amp circuit breaker, which is what was recommended in the instructions. And then from here down, we're gonna have our wire going to the alternator. Then from here, we have the positive going to the positive battery side of everything. So I have a 70 amp circuit breaker, which is what was recommended. And all of this that you see on the board is four gauge wire coming down to my positive bus bar. Then from there, I have a 100 amp circuit breaker going to my fuse panel. All of my DC 12 volt appliances are gonna be running from this side of things and then traveling below, and then I will attach them here. From one of these positives, I will be putting a two, I don't know how you say it, two slash zero gauge wire 
to the inverter when I get that. And then for here, to break up the system, like if I ever need to work on it, I bought these on and off switches. So this will be going right here. So we'll be doing, again, the two slash zero, I'm not sure how to say that, um, wire to this. And then from this, it'll be going to the battery, which will have a 250 amp inline fuse on that. I also forgot to mention, we're gonna have another on and off switch, which will be going here to shut off the solar panel. I can totally isolate this this unit, if I ever need to work on anything, from the solar panels and from the batteries, completely cutting off all the power. Um, and that's just how I chose to do things. So just like that. And then we have our negative bus bar. So our common negative will be going here from the MPPT. The negative from our fuse block going to here. Again, we'll have a negative going to our inverter. And then this is going to our battery shunt. And this shunt will be connecting to the negative of the batteries. And then this is gonna be connected to our Victron battery monitor, which we'll be mounting up this side of the wall where we can see it. And yeah, that is, that is the system. And I will bring in the batteries to show you how that's all going to look and fit together. Okay, so we have our Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries in place. They're gonna be connected in uh, 12 volt orientation, parallel. This whole system is 12 volt. That's how much clearance we have between everything. And I have these two by twos along the edges to show you that we're gonna build a little perimeter around these so that they stay in place. This is, again, the alternator wire. Just wanna show you. That's just gonna, that's just gonna connect like that. It's gonna be, like I said, not as tidy as I'd like it. And then let me, I'm gonna run the wires that we have in the closet here. These are all of our 12 volt accessory wires and just run them into here so you can see that. Okay, so the wires are gone from there and now they're traveling underneath this countertop where the fridge is going. All of the wires you see on the bottom are all the accessories. So fan one, fan two, uh, bedroom, uh, 12 volt charging, the light for the bathroom. These are the solar wires. And yeah, that's kind of it. Any other wires that we have are gonna be running underneath this bench area, um, either along the back or the front. And yeah, I mean, we might have a 12 volt charging here along with our battery monitor and then a AC outlet that will connect to the inverter right here. And then doo -doo -doo -doo, the light switch for the lights that are gonna go below the cabinets and for all of these lights, it's gonna get connected right there. And then I'm, the wire's probably gonna travel on the back here underneath, underneath the bench seat to here. Same with our 12 volt water pump. And I mean, that's it. We really don't have a lot going on here. I also don't think I went over what our solar charge controller does. It's a Renergy 50 amp MPPT uh, DC to DC charger. So that means that we are charging from the solar panels and we're also charging from the starter battery when we have the engine on. So. Uh, if you read the pamphlet of the actual unit, you'll see that when they're both in use, so when we're driving and the solar panels are working, which they're always on, uh, it's 25 amps from each that they're getting. They kind of cap off. Um, so when the engine is off, 50 amps is what we can get from the solar panels. I'll show you sort of how I configured everything on the starter battery because I was a little bit confused about that. I saw one video of a guy who installed this, so let me show you the engine compartment with the wires coming to that. All right, here's the engine. So what we did here was this red cable is the red cable for the Renergy unit. And 
this black cable is the is the negative cable for the U energy unit. This I think this was the terminal mount that came with the engine. This was a new one I bought. This one has a lot more components on it. This was all already on the terminal. This it's cool. It's got this little winged nut for that. Uh, so that is that. And then these cables go down and they run the length of the vehicle to the back where the unit is. Okay, that concludes the build series. Thanks again for tuning in, liking and subscribing and stay tuned for all our adventures to come.